This is the true face of heresy. One who would subvert our faith and incite rebellion against the High Council. No, you need a battle royale. That's what you need. In order for this game to go longer than three weeks after launch, from a spectating standpoint, it needs a... This heretic and those who follow him must be silenced. Their slander offends all who walk the path. What would you have your Arbiter do? What's up, everybody? This is the Act Man here, and today I'm talking about Halo Infinite's new campaign overview. So let's jump straight. Dead game. What? There's no Battle Royale coming out. Infinite's gonna die in three weeks after launch. Mark my words. Consider them marked, but can we not talk about this right now? If there's no Battle Royale, then Halo Infinite will be the biggest missed opportunity in gaming that I've ever seen. Did you miss that whole cyberpunk thing that happened? Y you know, I really don't want to get into this right if now. If Halo Infinite doesn't release with a robust and well-made Battle Royale, it will be one of the greatest gaming failures in history. All right, cool it, dog. That's not why we're here. Anyway. As much as I love Halo, I don't see it lasting a month without BR. Multiplayer arena shooters are just dated at this point. <laughs> All right, now you're done fucked up. I'm taking the gloves off. You want the gloves off? They're off. So here we are again, in another discussion about how horrible it is that Halo Infinite is not launching with a Battle Royale mode. Why won't you die? But this time, I was provoked. I was attacked, and so I woke up this morning and chose violence. And I wouldn't be throwing my hat into the mix if not for Dr. Disrespect, because his comments and reactions to the Halo Infinite campaign overview were... Well, let's just say I fell for his trap card. I, I, I see like 11, 12, 13 year old demographic here. Maybe 14, 15. Excuse me! But then any older than that, it's kind of pushing it. Excuse me! Bro, if that's what you think of Halo fans, then you'll be shocked when I tell you about the demographics for this little known franchise called Call of Duty! But this isn't just about the two-time champion of the NBA Jam blockbuster tournaments. This is about the streamer mentality overall and how people look at the Battle Royale genre. Most of the streamers I talk about, I do have respect for as entertainers, and the ones that I'm not familiar with, I don't have anything against them. That's okay, right? You can disagree with someone on the internet and not hate them. Hold on, let me, let me look this up. Uh, well, let's just say it's all right for this video. So well, I'm going to be talking about Dr. Disrespect a lot, before we go any further, you need to know that he doesn't hate Halo. I don't think any of these guys do or want to see Infinite fail. As an FPS god, it would be heresy if he didn't respect Halo, of course he does. And I'm not disrespecting Halo. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on, lady. Ach Ach Achina? I'm not disrespecting Halo? I grew up on it! And he has a lot of great things to say about Halo Infinite. I love the map design. I love what I what I had experienced in multiplayer. And for those that just want the Halo Infinite multiplayer experience and, and think that I said that the game's gonna die, no, no, it's gonna be well populated. You're goddamn right. Don't get me wrong. I'm not challenging these guys to a 1v1 on Guardian where the winner takes all. I'm just challenging the ideas. I'm sure the big question on your mind is, why is there an obsession with wanting every new shooter to have a battle royale mode? But the question I'm asking is much more important. Where does this obsession come from? Am I the only one that thinks the Halo battle royale would be fun? No, you're not tr like, no, this guy's trapped in a box, in his little multiplayer box from 2005. No, come join the outside of the box thinking. Come join us. Next level thinking, outside of the box thinking, new gaming experiences, come join us. No, I don't think I will. I don't think I need to explain the popularity of BRs. They've had a top spot in Twitch's most watched games and on Steam charts. Obviously having a BR is gonna draw in more players. I don't think anybody's complaining that Halo Infinite would have too much content if they had a battle royale on top of everything else. But you see, there's a key point these big streamers seem to miss when they say a game will die if it doesn't have Battle Royale. That key point, live viewer statistics are not the only way to measure a game's success, and it sure as hell is not the most important stat. It's like they're blind. Did we just erase the last five year 
history of streaming and the effects of streaming on the gaming space and the shelf life of games and the enthusiasm around the communities that are built around these games? I mean, do we just completely, do we just want to completely forget the history? I'm glad Doc said this because he's not wrong. I just think maybe he's overlooking something. Let me rephrase this. Did we just erase the last 16 year history of YouTube and the effects of YouTube videos on the gaming space and the shelf life of games and the enthusiasm around the communities built around these games? I mean, do we just want to completely forget that history? If you're someone who's implying that live streaming is the best and biggest form of promotion an influencer can give to a video game, you're sadly mistaken. Especially if you try to hold up Twitch's most viewed games as the holy bible on what's popular or not. Here are some fun facts for you. In 2021, Twitch has had around 140 million monthly active users. Uh, YouTube has over 2 billion. If we're going by straight raw stats in every single category except one, YouTube is 10 times bigger in scope than Twitch is. That one category, coincidentally, is live stream views. Just because a game isn't super popular on one platform or isn't watched as much through this type of content doesn't mean it's not popular somewhere else. Case and point, fucking Minecraft. Or Smash Ultimate, man, the live stream reveal of Sora got how many viewers, like over a million? How many people are streaming Smash Ultimate right now? I rest my case. I hardly ever watch people stream in Smash Bros Ultimate, but three years after the game's release, I still consistently watch content from Little Z, King of Skill, Mock Rock, Asum Sauce, Introspective. Check those guys out, by the way, they're great. Obviously, if a game is watched by hundreds of thousands of people, there's some level of interest, right? And it promotes the game, but that's not the only factor that determines if a title like Infinite is gonna flop or succeed. I find it ironic that these guys think every shooter needs a BR at release in order to thrive, but conveniently forget that Warzone didn't release until Modern Warfare was already out for five months. And what would you rather have? 10,000 viewers watching a game that 300 people are playing? Or 300 viewers watching a game that 10,000 people are playing? If you're a multiplayer shooter, you want more players. No, you need a battle royale. That's what you need. In order for this game to go longer than three weeks after launch, from a spectator standpoint, it needs a BR. Now, first off, why does a spectator standpoint matter to people that aren't streaming the game? What difference does it make to anyone besides you beyond giving people this surface level impression that the game is popular? If you're concerned about viewer counts and you're referring to Twitch, I'm also sorry because you're forgetting who the king of viewers is. It's rewind time. Shit man, the last three Halo Infinite videos I did got a total of like 2.6 million views. Nice. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But they weren't from a live stream, so I guess it doesn't matter. Oh wait, I got a few of those too. And would you look at that? The views aren't bad. Halo content on YouTube has seen a tremendous surge in attention and relevance, and when 343 posts a new trailer or gameplay video like they just did, it usually hits at the top or near the top of trending. You see, this obsession that BRs are essential to a shooter's success comes from the skewed mindset of people who do that for a living. I mean, do we play the campaign, champs? Yes! Should we? Yes! I gotta be honest, I, I wasn't too big on the, um, the campaign stuff. What? You know what? You know what I do like watching about this. It's like all I'm thinking of is battle royale. This genre has been established as one of the hottest, most profitable gaming trends of the last five years, and it's still going strong. But who are the ones advocating for that to continue? You see, in the modest amount of research that I did, I noticed a common theme amongst the big streamers like Nick Merckx, Dr. Disrespect, Tim the Tapman, Courage JD, Dr. Lupo, King Richard, and even Osmongold. That common thread is they all appear to be following the same script, like they're all auditioning for the same part in a movie or something. I love Halo, it's one of my favorites, but ooh, no battle royale, kid? There's no excuse for that. I don't see Halo Infinite lasting X amount of time if it doesn't have a BR. Listen, when this game launches, viewership's not gonna be good, okay? Like, it's gonna be, it'll be good for like a week, 
but then it's just going to go, it's going to slip right into that traditional what's sandbox that, what's view. What's everyone's viewership today? One to two weeks, maybe three to a month max. I'm yeah. grinding, and then I just, I'm like, okay, I'm done. That's exactly. exactly. just me. Now, what I think these guys are really saying, besides Osmond Gold, of course, is I don't know if I can sell my audience on me playing this game when it doesn't have a different version of the same thing I've been streaming for the last two to five years. Now, as a fellow content creator, my laser eyesight pierces through these types of statements and I see the insecurities hidden beneath. Let me give you some valuable insight on the thought process behind content creation, especially for gaming channels, but this also applies to making movies, art, music, anything creative. So you can understand where these guys' comments are coming from. Pretty much anyone who has found success in making some type of content has struggled in ways you can't imagine to get to where they are now. So on people like me, Nick Merckx, Dr. Disrespect, Courage, when we find success and better yet discover a way to sustain it, we'll fight to the fucking grave to see it last a bit longer. Even if it means we continue to play games we stopped enjoying years ago. We're like Gwyn, linking the first flame, knowing the flames will eventually die out anyways. It sucks to be typecast or to feel like you're stuck doing the same thing forever because of a fear you've convinced yourself will become true if you dare to branch out. The fear that doing anything else will cause the destruction of the paradise you built for yourself. Say the line, Bart! I'm playing Call of Duty again. Yeah! You see, it's not Halo Infinite that won't survive without a battle royale. It's you. Or at least that's the impression you guys give off. Unintentionally, I imagine. But give yourself some goddamn credit. You didn't get to where you are just because you played the popular game. You have talent, you're an entertainer, a personality. People will tune in just to see you. So I need a battle royale to remain irrelevant and profitable with my BR audience. My uh, BR... Champs, you only watch me for BR. You can stream Halo Infinite and still be successful. Even if you stream it for longer than three weeks or fucking diversify, you gotta diversify your bonds, man. You need to diversify your bonds, nigga. Imagine if we could go back to 2007 and see the current Dr. Disrespect playing ranked Halo 3? Are you kidding me? Where is the time machine? Okay, boom, you're one. Where's your brother at? Oh, yeah, there he is too. I know you guys had a sister. Uh, three. That's a triple kill. I'm genuinely shocked that these guys who are all top of their game at first person shooters can't see the potential of streaming a ranked mode in a new Halo game and kicking some fucking ass in it. People watch you guys play Battle Royale because of the tension and the story of each match and how that plays out. What about the story about how you get to be ranked in the top 1% of all Halo Infinite players? What about the story of people who grind League of Legends trying to get Diamond? You don't think people want to watch that? Doc, you are the snipe champion, man. This is the hardest sniper to use in Halo history. Show me how it's done, baby. Come on, step it up. Maybe. Maybe he's not really the two-time. Maybe he's just the one-time. Or God forbid, the no-time. Watch, watch your ugly looking mouth when you're talking to the two-time. But in the words of the late Biggie Smalls, Mo viewers, Mo problems. Make no mistake about the apparent confidence of YouTubers and streamers at the top, I imagine they worry about their longevity more than anyone else. Because when you're at the top, there's nowhere to go but down. I don't think these guys are preemptively passing judgment on Halo Infinite because they're greedy and just want to hop on the latest trends to make shitloads of dollars. I hope that's not the case. I don't think it is. I think it comes from a sense of self-preservation. And that might be hard to understand if you haven't clawed your way to gain an audience. These guys are not worried if Halo Infinite will be a fun game, because it is fun. They know that. They played it. They had fun playing it. That much is clear. They are worried they cannot sustain the same audience while playing it, and trust me, they want to. This should be apparent from the clips I'm about to show you. Yeah, like it's, it's 2021 and we don't have a Halo BR yet, you know what I mean? But they're teasing it on Twitter. Cool, great. Imagine if Halo released on time and they had a polished BR coming out right now, it would take over everything because of where gaming is right now. It's crazy. It really would. It would take over everything. It would take over everything, man. Halo BR is fucking so easy. It's just an easy make. And if I'm wrong, if they do, if they do, I'll see you guys later, you know what I mean? I'm never, I'm never playing. I've been Halo. Now, Nick Merckx almost said it, he kind of implied it, but it sounded like 
If Halo got a BR, he would drop Warzone right then and there, never play it again. I'll see you guys later, you know what I mean? And maybe that's just hyperbole, but doesn't that come across as a little desperate for something new? Doesn't it sound like he's been looking for something to take Warzone's place for a long time now? If you're that ready to jump ship? But who knows? Maybe I'm just reading too far into this stuff. When he was playing with Dr. Disrespect and Dr. Lupo, Tim the Tapman is clearly worried about his viewer count as he asks the other guys how their stream is doing. Okay, like it's gonna be, it'll be good for like a week, but then it's just gonna go, it's gonna slip right into that traditional what's sandbox that, what's view. What's everyone's viewership today with this? I'm just curious. I've got uh, 120,000. Okay, I have 121,000, so that's a little low for me, right? Fuck. <clears throat> but do you, do you actually have 120,000? No. No. And I'm, and I'm low. I'm, I'm, my my average is lower than Warzone, straight up. Okay, and that's fine. I wanted to play this, but it is yeah, lower. But if but if it was a BR, it'd be it'd probably be mm -hmm. higher. It would be. I agree. My viewer count is lower, guys. It's fine. It's fine. I don't care. I wanted to play this, but it is lower. Comparison is the thief of joy, Tim. Meanwhile, in this video, the doc is concerned that 343 might fuck up the battle royale if they do it, and he can't stop thinking of BR scenarios for Halo, possibly to escape the idea of eventually having to go back to Call of Duty. I was looking at him like, I, I, I was looking at this big team battle gameplay footage, and I'm like looking at it, just thinking to myself, God, I hope these guys, if they make a battle royale, I hope they execute it correctly. You know what? You know what I do like watching about this. It's just like all I'm thinking of is battle royale. Like, look at the vista. Look at the mountain in the background. What's this structure way over here? You know, is there a sniper on top of that bad boy with a banshee? This game would be sick with a battle royale, man. Oh. Woo. I mean, just. I mean, none of this is none of this is pulling me in. You know, it'd be kind of a sick. I'm just kind of thinking of just mechanics, battle royale mechanics, how you drop into a world. Imagine the start of this fucking battle royale. This 300 man battle royale. Same battle royale. Again. Same. Battle royale. Again. I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say Battle royale. One more goddamn time. And when he says, I'm excited to have something in the rotation. And not to say that I'm not excited for a brand new Halo game just to check out. And, and if it's good, boom, we're in. And to have something in the rotation, it gets me, uh, gets me excited. What he means is, I'm excited at the concept of playing something different. I just wish it was a battle royale. And Dr. Lupo throughout this is trying to rationalize why Halo Infinite should be launching with a BR and how that would only have positive effects for the game, which is wrong and I'll tell you why later. Yeah. yeah. And, and what doesn't make sense to me is that you can literally still have the best of both worlds. Like why, right. why not? Why not? Why not? Just don't play the BR if you don't enjoy it. Just don't play the BR. And I would, I would assume, I could be wrong, but I would assume that it'll probably bump the numbers in your multi multiplayer up a little bit as well. Just yeah, a little probably. bit. Just a little maybe, bit. Maybe just slide them out, you know? Obviously, a lot of people might want to try to play the BR, and it might take a few players away. But if you do, you know, similar to what COD has, where you can, like, unlock things and weapon, like, upgrade your weapons and shit like that, like, I don't know, or maybe camos, you know? Now, granted, I only got these impressions after watching a few highlight videos on Doc's channel, so I'm not jumping the gun and saying, well, this is the full picture. Yet if you watch how they played Infinite, it's like... They're treating every encounter like it's a one-life mode. Be honest, be honest, be honest. Behind me, behind me, behind me! I just literally two on my axe, guys. They're guys invisible. in the mid, one has a one shot. That guy has They're both one rifle. shot down low, they're both one shot. Three mid, three mid, three mid is skewer. That's a lot of sweating for a tech preview, man. I mean, I'm not one to judge. Obviously, you guys got people watching you. You want to put on a quality show. But it just sends the wrong message to me when I watch them playing this. That message being, each one of you is trying with all your might to enjoy this as if it's a battle royale, instead of enjoying it for what it is. These dudes are all FPS multiplayer fanatics, especially the Doc who has nothing less than God-given talent. And it's okay if you're not a huge fan of the single player campaigns in these games, but why are you watching a campaign video and talking about battle royale? You're not even trying to be invested in it. You're not even trying to give it a chance, man. It's like, all I'm thinking of is battle royale. You've let this battle royale concept invade your mind and it's like, and it's blocking your sunglasses. Take the sunglasses off, doc, and watch the campaign overview with clear eyes. The streamers are blind, Arbiter, but I will make them see.
Halo fans expect way more from a single player campaign, way more effort, and that effort has to come from somewhere. My issue with these big streamers is not that they want a battle royale in Halo Infinite, because, little secret for ya, I want one too. My problem is that they want it for the wrong reasons and they want it at the wrong time. And my goal isn't to attack the credibility or reputation of any of these guys, just to point out why I think they're misguided here. Battle Royale should never have been a priority for Halo Infinite's release, and thank fuck it wasn't. Let me tell you why. Halo fans have been waiting for this game since Reach, because it looks like a true successor to Halo 3, the pinnacle of the series' popularity and success. Obviously, times have changed since 2007, and the same things aren't going to be popular, but what people love about a franchise more or less stays the same. You look at Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal. That shit went back to the fundamentals of what makes Doom, Doom. Metroid Dread, we're back to the fundamentals. Even Modern Warfare 2019 went back to the fundamentals of COD 4 and MW2. You see, Halo 5 was a game that catered to fans of advanced movement and was designed with an ultra-competitive esports mindset, which left casual players in the dust. Halo 4 appealed to Call of Duty fans in an extreme casual environment with loadouts and killstreaks, which left competitive players in the dust. And Halo Reach, while more in tune with the series' roots than 4 and 5, was kind of a spin-off that killed a lot of the hype in the eyes of the hardcore fans because armor abilities and loadouts got rid of even starts. And also, fuck armor lock. Reach, 4, and 5 are not terrible shooters. They have and still can be fun at times, but each one of them had their own share of controversy, and the franchise's community and fanbase continued to fracture and split because of that controversy. This is when Halo Infinite walks into center stage. Throughout its development and reveals, we have seen one of the most divided fan bases put back together and almost unanimously agree, this new Halo is on the right track. I can't tell you how long I have been waiting to say that. With this history lesson in mind, can you imagine how fucking pissed off the Halo community would be if 343 pulled yet another 180 spin and said, Oh, actually, we're gonna divert attention away from the parts of the game that you're looking forward to to make a battle royale. We know it's been six years since the last Halo, and I'm sure you all want us to chase current popular trends that everybody else is doing, and that'll make us stand out and look unique by doing Battle Royale, a brand new fresh concept. The last fucking thing I want Halo Infinite to do is go out of its way to cater to an audience that is not its core fans. You had four and five. Let us have infinite. For now. Out of its way is the key phrase here. These BR modes don't just fall out of the sky. As a map designer himself, I'm sure Dr. Disrespect could attest to the time, difficulty, and effort it takes to make one. And the last thing any of us want is a bad Battle Royale mode. The Halo franchise has so much more going on than most shooters. There's so many sub-communities within it with specific desires that it just needs to deliver. I think everyone, I think everyone in the world other than like hardcore, die-hard, competitive Halo fans want to see a VR. Yeah. yeah. And, and what doesn't make sense to me is that you can literally still have the best of both worlds. Like why, right. why not? Why not? Why not? Just don't play the BR if you don't enjoy it. Just don't play the BR. Despite what Dr. Lupo is saying to try and justify this, development of a battle royale would no doubt have resulted in less content in other parts of the game. Lest we forget Black Ops 4 and the campaign that never was. But that's why people are upset at these kinds of comments that Infinite can't survive or thrive without a BR. Because you're diverting attention away from what Halo should be doing right now. And that's going back to the fundamentals. We need to get back to focusing on the basics, a Master Chief story with great writing, the Halo-y soundtrack, custom game options, refine the art style, armor customization, forge, big team battle, sandbox arena shooter, a multiplayer that appeals to casuals and competitors. Once the game launches, after we get co-op campaign, after we get forge, then we can all start planning a battle royale together. And I hope you're all there with me, because when it does come out, it's gonna steal the fucking spotlight. We can probably make our own Battle Royale when Forge comes out. You just have to be patient. We need to go back to the fundamentals, man. The combat evolved fundamentals. You know why? 
because that game evolved FPS combat. And Halo Infinite is changing the game, radically. First Halo title to launch simultaneously on PC and Xbox. It's coming with Game Pass. First Halo multiplayer to go free to play. Triple A first person shooter, huge budget, free to play. What? First Halo to create a truly open world campaign. A battle pass that never expires. Monetization that doesn't affect the gameplay. This is a checklist of every single Call of Duty fanboy's dreams. Halo Infinite is tearing down as many barriers to entry as possible. So people have as few excuses as possible to watch someone else play the game when they could be playing it themselves. Halo Infinite is looking awesome, even without a BR. In conclusion, do I agree with the doc that Halo Infinite would greatly benefit from a battle royale? Yes. Do I agree with him that it probably won't hit those same viewer counts without one? Yeah, probably. I mean, it definitely will if you continue to stream it. But in the grand scheme of things, none of that matters. We've waited on Halo Infinite for six years. It's not going away in three weeks. Listen up, Spartans. It's Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief Sierra 117. Subscribe to the Actman for awesome content. And finish the fight. Master Chief, out.